So this is the first of the transition elements walkthroughs videos. So I'm going to do it slightly differently to the other ones, the NMR ones and the buffer solution ones, because the questions are too big to fit on one slide. So basically the link to the questions that you're going to see in this video um, are going to be in the description of the video. So if you just want to click on that, um, download the PDF and then have a go at the questions before you watch the rest of the video. Okay, so let me know what you think and feel free to pop any comments down in the comment section below. Okay, so go through the answers then. So the first thing I'm going to do is complete the electron structure of an atom of iron and an ion of Fe2+. So we're picking up the electron configuration at 3s, so it's 3s2, 3p6. Remember, 4s fills next. I'm going to leave some space and put it here. I'll explain why in a second. So 4s2 and that leaves 3d6. Now you can put these the other way around if you want, so 4s2 then 3d6. The reason I've done that is because I've asked for an ion of uh, ion 2 plus. These are the electrons that go out first, so you work from the outside and go back. So it's going to be 3s2, 3p6, 3d6. Okay, so moving on to part B, one property of Fe2+, plus, other than the ability to form complex ion, which is typical of an ion of a transition element, we can't go for variable oxidation state here because it specifies um, Fe2+. Plus. So what they're after here is it has coloured ions or the ability to act as a catalyst. Moving on to part C, using oxidation numbers, show both reduction and oxidation have taken place in the redox reaction. Now there's a big clue in the question there, not that we really need it. Iron is starting out in its plus two oxidation state in iron two sulfate. So let's have a look at what iron is now. So sulfate ions have a two minus charge. So there's three of those, so that's six minus altogether. So two of these to balance that out must mean iron is plus three. So iron's been oxidized. So the substance reduced, well, if we have a look at the chromium, so we've got seven oxygens, so they're minus two each, so that's minus 14 for those seven oxygens. Two sodiums, they're one plus each. So we're left with, um, we've got to find plus 12, basically, from the two chromiums, so it must be starting out as plus six. Then if we have a look at the chromium in this, so again, sulfate's two minus, there's three of those. So it's a bit like this one. So it's going to be plus three for those two chromiums. So chromium's reduced, it's gone from plus six to plus three. Part D, we've got to write the expression for the equilibrium constant for this equilibrium. So just remember that it's the equilibrium concentrations of the products over the reactants, any balancing numbers become powers. And just a little catch in this one, the water, because it's a liquid, remember liquids don't go into KC expressions. So that's what we get for that. Part E, so we're told hemoglobin's a complex of iron 2. That's key when it comes to this answer. You'll see in a second why. Explain how ligand substitutions allow hemoglobin to transport oxygen in the blood. So we need to say something like oxygen binds to the Fe2+, plus. So remember it's iron 2, in haemoglobin and that's then carried to the cells where the oxygen substitutes for water. Now I've checked the mark scheme and you are actually allowed to say um, the oxygen substitutes for carbon dioxide but technically it is water that substitutes with the oxygen at the cells. And part two, explain why carbon monoxide is so toxic. So if you remember, carbon monoxide is also a ligand. It can form a much, much stronger coordinate bond with the Fe2+, plus, and once it's on, it doesn't come off. So the blood's ability to carry oxygen is severely reduced. So moving on to part F, we've got to explain why platin is neutral. So we've got the formula of platin here. So we've got platinum in its plus two oxidation state. We can tell that from that Roman two there. The two ammonia ligands, they're both neutral, but the chloride ligands are one minus each. 
so minus one minus one so you can see the overall charge therefore is neutral next part of f we've got to draw the two stereoisomers of platen and describe its bonding so you notice i've already put up the framework for these square planar complexes um, platen forms square planar complexes so they're flat and they are all the bond angles are 90 degrees so basically there's two ways we can um, orientate the ligands. We could put the chloride ligands directly opposite each other. So they're effectively uh, 180 degrees apart. So that means the ammonia ligands, remember they bond via the nitrogen. So you'll be careful when you, that one there, you've got to draw that one back to front. So we've got a 180 degree bond angle between the chlorides or the ammonias, I suppose you could say as well. Whereas in this one, you could put the chlorides next to each other. So in other words, they're 90 degrees apart, which obviously means the ammonias go there and there. So the one on the left is the trans isomer. So this would be called trans platen. And the one on the right is called the cis isomer. So in terms of the bonding, what kind of bonds have we got between the ligands and this platinum two plus ion? It's coordinate bonding. So the ligands are providing a pair of electrons to bond to the central transition metal ion. And the last part of F, describe the action of platin in the treatment of cancer patients. So remember it's the cis isomer that is used in cancer treatment. So something like this, cis platin has the right shape to bind to the DNA of cancer cells and that stops them from dividing. Moving on to part G, we've got to come up with structures for this ion here and carboplatin, which is this alternative for um, platin in medicine. Similar structure to platin, but the uh, two chloride ligands have been replaced with this. So what does this look like first of all? Well, if we unpick the name, so it's a cyclobutane. So effectively, I want to draw it as a diagonal. You'll see why in a second. So that's cyclobutane. Dicarboxylate means we've got two times C double bond or single bond or minus. So if we put that together, the fact that it's 1 1 cyclobutane dicarboxylate means that these two carboxylate ions are on carbon 1. So if I make that carbon 1, so you've got C double bond or single bond or minus, C double bond or single bond or minus. So in terms of this complex carboplatin, remember we were told it's similar to platin, which obviously has the two chloride ions here and here. So instead of those, we've got this new ligand. So I'll just get rid of those minus charges and bind to the PT2 plus in the middle. 